the real long. I kind of enjoy that. that okay. Better. Okay. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Um, all right. Let's get started. Are you okay, or do you wanna? I feel like it's okay. I think this is. We'll be fine. Just oh, thanks, that. Katie. Okay. So again, I'm Lois Bielefeld. I'm the current program director for the Martin Mentorship Program. Um, and I just want to, you know, behind every artist, there are mentors. And um, I did not get to where I'm at without a slew of mentors over the, the course of the years. And I, I think back to all of the impact that those various mentors have had for me. And that um, is very much so kind of how I like to think about how I was putting together this program. So the, this program is in the 18, its 18th year. So it has serious roots. Um, Marne has been around since 2002, but it's only had this physical space for since the, just around the pandemic time period. So um, it's really exciting to have this space and this footprint and this this hub um, to support um, our work. Okay. Um, if, yeah. We're we're basically recording this so that we can upload this Q and A to um, for other people to watch. Just as a heads up, why we're recording. Um, okay, so basically, um, the mentorship program is a year long uh, program. You get paired up with a, another artist in Milwaukee, and um, and it doesn't all. It's interdisciplinary, so we have artists that are paired in completely different disciplines. Um, and we have artists that are paired within the same discipline. And it just kind of works out uh, to some degree organically. There is um, a speed greet, sort of speed dating where everyone kind of meets each other. And from that, you, you get to kind of figure out who are the people that you know you really connected with and that you're interested in working together and on both sides as mentors and mentees. Um, Basically, I'm in, was interested for the past um, year in three sort of core areas. One was that mentorship and like really helping make space for that relationship to develop. And then secondly was uh, professional development. So we had a ton of professional development workshops. Um, just to understand, I'm going to just list off. So we had studio visits with all 16 mentors of which uh, we got to go into their studios and get a deep dive into their spaces, into the materials they use, the ideas they're thinking about, um, and very much so, um, yeah, their their space and what they're doing, and ask all of those questions that up with Robin Sembolust, who's a writer um, out of New York. We did a two-part writing workshop with Alex uh, Shaw. She's a local writer, writing ex instructor and an artist. And that was um, where the mentees put together their artist statements and their bios. Um, there was a demystifying the gallery scene in, in Milwaukee. It was a panel of, I think it was five, uh, different uh, gallerists in Milwaukee that came and presented not only about their gallery, but then very much so um, talked about the ins and outs of how to get into galleries, how to make connections, how to um, how to put together a show. Um, we had, let's see, a hyperlocal improv dance and musical performance that just happened um, in conjunction with the exhibition. Um, and then right now, as you experienced earlier, we had uh, we are doing three mentee talkbacks, so where all of the mentees are sharing about their work. Um, and then we have special performances. So Brian Cherry, one of our mentors, who's a musician and poet, did a reading and a performance. And then um, in two weeks, we'll have Kitty Avila Lowmiller, and also a mentor, and Maria Gillespie um, doing pr live performances in the gallery space. Um, and then also there's been an expressive or will be an expressive charcoal self-portrait workshop that two of our mentees um, put together and uh, pitched to us as a way to activate um, the exhibition. Um, and there will be a coming up film screening in Ju June called The Art of Making It. Um, and that will also follow a discussion about just how do you make it in the art world? Um, so the, finally, there's the exhibition. And um, that that working towards that for over the course of the year, and then the artist book. So there's that kind of physical um, 
sort of the artist book really is kind of thinking about this timeline of a year and like being a part of a community in this program, it really becomes this like, you know, the, the archive of, of the year. And it's, it, uh, you know, it's what, what stays beyond the experiences within with the artist. So um, that, yeah, that final goal for me was creating this rich, vibrant community with all of the artists. Um, so you've, you're here because you've heard about the program, you're interested. Um, I currently will be stepping down from my role as program coordinator, and um, Elena is a who is a current mentor and who has been uh, run, or experiencing the program for the past year will be taking over. So I'm going to pass it over to you. Um, she comes to us as an associate lecturer at UW Milwaukee, um, and she is also a visual artist and a writer. So yeah. thank you. Cool. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I'm going to kind of talk a lot because there's a lot to cover. Um, so I guess just to lay the groundwork, um, I'll just, are you leaving your mic on? That'll work. Okay. Um, I guess just to lay the framework of what I'm going to be talking about in this time that we have, um, the first thing is just kind of um, explaining some visions that I have as far as the program for the next cycle of how I would love to see it go, but also embracing that sometimes serendipitous moments happen. Um, and then I will talk about the application itself, which if you are already in the mentorship program, then you'll hear some things that are a little bit different than how they went uh, this past year. Um, and then I'll also show you where you can find the um, the application, how you can make a submittable if you haven't done that before, and also where you can find all of the info that I'm going to be reading some pieces from, from, so hitting the high points, but I'm not going to be like reading everything because it is accessible online. And then we also have some copies over there physically if you would like that. Yes, just... Uh, before I dive into like my visions and how that's relating to everything, I came into this program um, really wanting to find community because I am not from Milwaukee. I'm not from the Midwest at all. And I had been here for about a year, just kind of going to work and going home um, until Lois reached out and was like, apply. Um, and I did. And I applied as a mentor because I felt like I had something to offer. I was already teaching and working pretty heavily as a visual artist. Um, and then that was, I mean, everything else, we can just see how it unfolded. And I got thankfully paired with Katie, which has been a really great um, shared experience, um, especially with Lois's program, really focusing on like prioritizing the interdisciplinary. Um, Cause I think on paper, me and Katie have differences, but in person and all the other wonderful things, there are a lot of similarities. Um, so I guess just going into things that I'm envisioning, and this isn't in any particular order, I just kind of wrote them down um, from scratch notes that I wrote on the train, and then I wrote them more pretty here. Um, that's not messed up. So a um, first thing that I'm envisioning for this cycle um, of mentors and mentees is making sure that it is a program that cultivates long lasting relationships, both internally and externally, um, and being a truly inclusive community. So with the cohort and mentors between everyone, but also just in Marn in general, because there's a lot of things that happens here at the hub and just in Milwaukee as a whole. A second thing is um, providing opportunities and resources um, on two main realms, which is already happening and has continued to happen. So some things that I mentioned are already happening and I just wrote them out as like a, this is something that should stay because um, Lois laid a great groundwork. But on the two realms, one is both um, uh, here, just like Marn as a whole, offering resources to people in the program, but also allowing it to be a space where the mentors are also um, providing resources and skills that they have both to their mentee, but also to other people in the program um, through the form of like workshops and skill sharing. Cause I think that it's, it's by 
I mean, you can already see in the show, there are people doing a lot of amazing things, both on the mentor and mentee side. And it's just so much that people have to offer that I really wanted to emphasize that. Um, and just making sure that it's a constant cycle of learning from and with each other, because it is such a shared experience that I'm still actively um, learning with Katie. Uh, the third thing is considering and prioritizing diversity and inclusion, which both is in terms of background, but also in terms of discipline. Um, uh, the fourth thing is fostering a safe space, encouraging and sustaining continuous growth and transformation. And then the fifth, um, connection building in the Milwaukee area on a broad level, because there are so many amazing things in Milwaukee, which I'm still learning and still excited to keep learning. Um, which I'm probably one of few that is new-ish to Milwaukee. Um, but I still think that there's a lot out there that can be seen. So I'm going to transition from that and just dive into um, talking about the application. I think from here it will be easier. My computer is being really tired. Okay. I can you want me to share? Yeah, maybe. Okay. I think it's just because it's running Zoom and I don't know. It's just tired. And I upgraded software like OS systems yesterday. Maybe it's that. Who knows? But just be tired. Okay. Does this still record or should I hit re record or something? I'm not sure. Is it recording on Is it uh, I haven't it's shared but yeah, but it's not it's not responding to anything I'm doing. So I feel like I'm sharing now, but should I let's just record the end this way? And then maybe I'll I think zoom and um And one more. Okay. okay, great. I think it's still recording. -ish. Mm -hmm. If it's saying pause, share. Yeah, I'm recording. still recording on mine. It's okay, just I can't great. even like. Awesome. I think this will be. Okay. Fine then. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you where you can find the application and other information and then show you how you can create a submittable and go through the application that way, just in case there's anyone here that doesn't know that and also for recording purposes. Um, so if you are on the MARN website, um, the way that you navigate to that, um, just make sure that I have the mic on, which it is, which is good. Okay. The way that you navigate to that is if you go to programs, go down to MARN Mentorship. And then it'll bring you here to this page and it's at the very top. Um, so you don't have to do any scrolling per se to find it unless you decide to scroll down to where there are FAQs, which hopefully I cover this pretty well today, but this.
keep scrolling and then this will bring you to where you actually start filling out info. Um, so I'm going to, I'll try to go back and forth as best as I can, um, but I'm going to go over the general guidelines first and then I'll split it up a bit to information that's uh, very specific to mentors and then the info that's very specific to mentees. Um, so I'm going to be reading not all of it. So if I'm looking down and I'm giving eye to contact, I just unfortunately don't have eyeballs at the top of my head. Um, so as far as the guidelines, uh, important things, which I'm hoping that most of what I'm saying is pretty key. Um, this application is open through May 21st, that night, 11.59 p.m. Um, so it'll close at 12 a.m. on May 22nd. So from this point, it's about two weeks left of the application being open. Um, and all are encouraged to apply, and I'll talk more about that later um, if you're eligible. So that's like the only distinction. Um, as far as the selection overview, prospective mentors and mentees must submit an application to be considered. So everyone has to submit if you are applying, whether as a mentor or, or as a mentee. Um, in this cycle, we are also including an interview portion um which after that part then that is when we'll make like our main selection of mentees and mentors um as far as a different that's or a difference that's happening um in this program there are 16 pairs 16 mm -hmm. yeah 16 pairs so 32 in total um we are cutting that in half this time just about in half so eight to ten mentees and mentors um for a bit of a more intimate group. Um, so that's why that's spelled out on there, just to be as transparent as possible. Um, and then I'll talk more about like timeline and everything with the interview portion once I get to that point. As far as eligibility, um, the main, there are about two main things and one is like a third for people that are currently in the cycle. Um, so you're ineligible to apply if you're not a full-time resident and or resident in Milwaukee or if you'll be a student on any level with the exception of if you're taking like a single enrichment course, which I have been reached out to about that um, already. So if it's just an enrichment course, then that's fine on the application. You'll just click, no, not gonna be a student. But if you're a student on any level, we just want that this mentorship to be for people who are not in school to give them the resources that assumingly you would get if you were a student, whether it's on a grad or an undergrad level. Um, there's no fee to apply, um, and you also don't have to be a MARN member to apply. So if you're not a MARN member, you don't have to become one in order to apply. That comes with, if you are accepted, that comes as a part of like the package deal of being in it. Um, I was not a MARN member when I applied, but no, I, I mean, I still am currently, but I'll be paid for it again whenever, you know, whenever, whenever. Okay, moving on. Um, if you are currently a mentor or a mentee specifically, um, there is now going to be like a waiting period before you can apply again, just to give space to other people who are wanting to apply as a mentee and also to keep the cycles kind of like this fresh rotation of um, artists, not to say that everyone's going to be completely new, but it is, it just frees up some space. However, that isn't to say that a mentee can't apply as a mentor. So if you're currently a mentee, you're know, like, I feel like I'm ready to be in that role um, as my mentor was or is, definitely I encourage you to apply for it um, or to apply to the program. And then there aren't any restrictions on if you're a mentor reapplying as a mentor. Okay. Um, timeline, this is, I'm forgetting to scroll. This should cover where I'm at. Um, as far as the timeline, as you can see on the screen, um, submission deadline, May 21st. Um, as far as interview stage, things are moving pretty quickly in this because I, one, I didn't want people to be left hanging for a long period of time because I hate that myself. And two, because it just needs to be um, something that happens relatively quickly because we had meetings trying to figure out ways of allowing there to be a little bit of overlap between the next cycle and then before this current one ends. So there's like a, a like a month of a overlap period just about. Um, so you'll be notified about interview stage on May 31st. Um, and then between the dates that's listed here as far as selected mentors and mentees and the interviews, 
that the interview portion will happen during that gap. So like the week of June 12th, um, if you happen to be someone that gets selected for that stage and you're like, I'm going to be out of town or something, I'm happy to accommodate that being a virtual thing. I think I'm pretty accepting of that now, especially after all the things that we have went through recently. Um, so that'll be an option if you get selected for that portion. Um, the speed meetings or the greetings that uh, Lois talked about earlier, that'll be happening again um, with the date of July 10th. And then from there, that is after that point, then you'll know more about like who you're being paired with based on how that goes. And I won't go into depth about that right now because it's a little bit delayed and we're just in application right now. And then the program starts August 1st, which is also a difference because um, this program went from July to July and we decided just to push that back a month to give people a break, especially if they're ongoing in the program. Um, and that seems now going through the process of planning everything, that seems like a really great decision. <laughs> okay. Now this is where I'm gonna split um, a little bit and talk specific to the mentee. So if you're not applying as a mentee, um, then this part, might not be as important, but um, this is what I'm going to focus on for right now. And then I'll swap to the mentors if you're applying as a mentor. Um, as far as, do you want to mention the mentee definition? Um, so yeah, I'm just going to read it. An emerging or re-emerging artist from a traditional or non-traditional background who wants to grow, develop, and experiment while having guidance and a consistent advisor. And just to explain my wording, because I I'll use I use this in the mentorship or the mentor section as well when I'm referring to traditional or non-traditional. Um, I'm kind of seeing that as like I went to school, I studied art, and then I went to school, I got an MFA, studied art, and that kind of being like a staple of like what it is to be an artist. But I'm like, there are also artists who are self-taught, or maybe they went to school for like I don't know, something like engineering. They're like, actually, I want to be an artist. Like that's still a space where you could apply to. Um, and you can either be emerging or re-emerging. Or if you're just in the middle of this transition, I'd be like, I just want to experiment with something new. Then that is the space where I'm like, you should definitely apply as a mentee then. Okay. Um, as far as requirements, um, these requirements will be similar to mentors with some exceptions, um, but it's a year commitment. So August to August of August this year to August of 2024, um, if accepted into the program, there's a hundred dollar tuition payment to participate. And if you need financial aid, definitely let us know. Um, and then we can help. Um, meetings, you meet a minimum of two hours every month with your mentor, which that's nothing that you'll schedule with me. You'll just schedule that with your mentor who you'll be spending the most time with. Um, participation in monthly MARN professional development workshops, events and program programming um, available for the speed greet, which is July 10th. Participation in the exhibition, just similar to what you see out there, or maybe not even similar, is gonna be like this out here. Um, and then award, available for quarterly check-ins with me over the program year. So like every three months or so, um, just a quick check-in. How are things going? What do you need? Um, is there anything I can help with? Um, as far as benefits for mentees, um, you do get a one-year Creative Marn membership, um, mentoring with an established artist, mentor-led professional development workshops, um, Head, headshots, which is something I want to implement is the photographer in my head, um, critiques, uh, field trips, networking, material financial support, which is a new one that we're implementing where if you are needing assistance, financial assistance to get materials. And that is something that you can um, like submit a request and ask us for. Um, and then also community build building, which is a huge one. Um, as far as things that you'll apply or apply, apply. As far as things that you'll submit, I'm not going to read all of this, just explain what the sections are. So you'll submit um, your demographic information. We don't share any of that. It's just for us to have um, both for uh, funding reporting requirements um, and also just to, as it says on here, use to help our organization better understand who we're reaching. 
Um, so we don't share your demographic information. Second section that you'll fill out is just your applicant info. So like name, address, that basic stuff, including uploading your CV or resume. And then the third section is just submitting work samples. Um, so somewhere between five to seven, they don't have to be complete. You can show us where you're at at the moment. Um, and that could even be in the form of sketchbooks or samples of things of like, here's what I'm working on. That can also give us an idea of kind of what you're wanting to go for if you're accepted into the program. Um, so don't feel too stressed that you need to submit something that is like complete. Um, because that's also the point of the program is to help you where you're at um, and maybe help get you to that point of completion, but also just help you in whatever transition that you're in. Um, and then all of the details as far as specifications are listed in the guidelines here. All right, switching over to mentors. I'm gonna sit that there. Um, as, let's see. Okay, mentor definition. Um, established or working artists also from a traditional or non-traditional route committed full to their practice and the Milwaukee art community. Um, as far as program requirements for mentors, um, again, very similar, a year commitment to your mentee in the program from August 1st to August 1st of 2023, 2024, meeting two hours every month with your mentee, which you'll schedule with them. Um, also available for the speed greet and the exhibition and participating in programming. Um, uh, a few more things is being able to offer a studio visit to the mentees and the mentors, because I think it's awesome that we learn from each other, regardless of the stage that we're at. Um, and then a new implementation is being able to provide one workshop over the program year based on your skills and expertise over the course of the program. So it doesn't have to be um, like, a, it doesn't have to be like a hands-on skill basing. It could also just be an idea that you may have. Like if you happen to be someone that is really great at writing and you wanna lead a workshop on artist statements, that's something that you would just let me know in the application. Um, and there's a, a slot for that of like ideas that you could possibly have, or even if it's something fun where you're like, I want to show this editing skill or something, then that's also a space it was pretty open in that regard, but like providing one workshop is the main thing. Um, continuing to meet with your mentee, assisting them with their needs and interest, and then also available for quarterly check-ins with me still, because I want to check in with everybody and just make sure that everyone's good and doing well and um, filling in gaps or being of assistance where I can be. Um, benefits for mentors include a stipend of $1,200 paid in two installments over the program year. So after six months, you get the first half. And then at the conclusion, you get the second half of that um, leadership, uh, leadership opportunity to guide a mentee. Um, also headshots, critiques, field trips, networking, and community building. Um, as far as things that you'll be submitting, it's a little bit different. Um, so applicant info, that's the same. Um, well, demographics, that's the first one. Same spill as far as applying for that. Again, we don't share it. We just keep it for us. Um, and then also funding reports. Applicant information, um, so website link, um, CV and resume. Um, the third section is program questions and written responses. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned this for the mentees, but you also have the program questions and written responses. Some are similar and then some of them are a little bit different. Um, and then, yes, and then that's all that you apply as or apply with as mentors. Um, and that pretty much wraps it up. The last one is just a conclusion of everything else that I just mentioned. So I'm going to take a breath and pause and ask for questions at this point. Yeah, and know that we have several mentors and mentees here. So if you have questions directly to their experiences, yes. and they are here also to kind of give some insight to you all. Is it, is it more common for a, a mentee to eventually become a mentor in the program? Or is it when you're looking for mentors, do you like, you prefer that they've been to the program once you or do you kind of look for people that are outside of the 
when I was running it, it was just artists that were committed to their practices and that were committed to Milwaukee and the Milwaukee art scene. So that people that I saw were really actively engaged. Um, and yeah, that I felt like I want to learn from them or I want to like, I would love to have them, you know, be able to pick their brain on a regular basis. So it was really open. We have, I'm trying to think, um, we have one, I think, mentor that was Adam who's our mentor that now I'm just blanking that was a mentee Maeve. yes thank you Maeve <laughs> just blanking because there's all of you here yeah so it's less like I mean and hopefully that starts cycling but and I'm also I didn't go through the program before becoming a mentor so I think yeah I don't think you have to go to the program before to become on any level. Mm -hmm. I'm also trying to put the slide back. I can't remember. Put a slideshow, slide yeah. Which one was it? Slideshow. Okay, how do we get the loop? And then down here, there's a dot dot. Look at that. Okay. Questions. Great. Um, um, do you get enough mentors and that you can match them? Well, it's more, well, I mean, we did. We Last year we got, I think it was about 50 mentors and 50 mentees. And then we narrowed that down to, you know, the 16 and 16, and it was really hard. <laughs> it might've been actually, I'm not sure if it was 50, but it, yeah, it was significant. Um, but again, we didn't, the pairings happened through the speed greeting and through people meeting each other and connecting and then, you know, laying out their preferences um, and their, their hopes, like they ranked people, you know, their top five or whatever. Um, and again, it's interdisciplinary. I, I very much so think that you can learn so much by working with an artist that isn't working in your medium. Um, you're still making your preferences. So you know, you, you could pick people that you're like, okay, I really want to learn more about painting. Um, thinking about Allison's talk, um, he really did want to learn. He wanted to move out of digital painting into actual painting. So he very much so wanted a mentor that was working physically in that realm. So that we do have people paired, you know, with medium, within mediums, but I mean, there's just as many probably not paired within mediums. So you're cutting them down by better than half. Is there certain things that um, are that you're looking for as a group? So certain experiences. Yeah, I'm not necessarily looking for, for key points or for points to key in on. I'm, I'm I'm coming at this as you know starting this my art career pretty late in my life and um not having an education in art and so I'm, I'm wondering what sort of things you might be looking for what mm -hmm. yeah i think just on um i can kind of split it up into like what i'm looking for because I'm, I'm assuming like with yours is more on like a mentee side um yes of uh, with mentees, I think what I'm looking for, and I should also, I didn't mention this, that it, even though I'm like over the program this year, I'm also, it's going to be like a panel of us that are reviewing to make sure that we're selecting um, people that are fit for the program for this cycle. But back to the, the question, I think for mentees, I think selecting people who are at just that exciting soft spot of like, I'm I'm wanting to do this thing and I feel ready to like move forward with the next step of being an artist, whatever that step is, then that's what I'm looking for. Um, and then on the opposite side of like being a mentor of it being someone who like feels pretty confident that they have a lot to offer, especially when you're guiding someone for a full year that's at a really vulnerable state of like wanting to do something different or explore in a different route. Um, that's also important, which was kind of a um, an inspiration for some of the questions in the applications of asking specifics of like, what are you looking for? What do you need right now that would be helpful for you at, in this program at this time? Um, 
which is like reflective on both parts of like the person answering the question, but also for us on the back end or who, who is going to be reading it of like where that the greatest need is, I guess, is the, the short answer to that question. Yeah. I know that we had several artists that were pretty young in their practices, but um, older in age and that, you know, we had also artists that were paired reverse as far as mentors being younger than their mentees. So there, there was a lot of exciting uh, intergenerational. Um, yeah. And, and definitely people that have not been, you know, uh, academically trained. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Did you have it? Okay, perfect. Cool. Um, <clears throat> So this year, it seems like the um, people went through the year, they produced their work, they're, they're showing here, and then there's a variety of programming. Did you have any kind of similar vision, or you expect that like change or evolve you know, the program? And yeah, I have a similar vision that right now I'm just imagining I have like my umbrella of like, workshops yes would love to have field trips of like exploring other spaces in Milwaukee and critiques and studio visits though I'm also leaving space for um, mentees and mentors who are accepted to add in their input as far as like what things would be helpful for them for the year because a year is a long time but also still being in it it also goes by really fast and I just want to make sure that there's voice left for that um but yeah that's that's kind of what I'm thinking of yeah I'd love um and I, oh yeah um the nature of the mentoring that goes on between these pairs on those monthly meetings is that driven by the mentees goals and questions or is it a mixture of is there a curriculum type thing or is it kind of as it develops based on your personal goals and interests? So it's very much so based on the relationship between the mentor and mentee. I did put out an email of like, hey, these are ideas so that people just don't, it, it's not just about let's get together and look at the work you made this past yeah. month. You know, there's like, let, you know, potential, I mean, people went on materials, I think Matthew and, um, Reese, you were saying how you went and to a metal fabricator and Matthew made that possible. Um, and so it, it, it's very much so about those goals. And I, I have, I mean, I suggest that the mentees work with their mentors to establish short-term and long-term goals at the front end. And now we're actually reevaluating those again at the long, at the end of the um, program as well. Cause it's kind of like, now what, what do you guys, you know, the show's up, the book's done now let's let's keep moving because it's really just this development of a long-term practice and that's was my fundamental goal it's just like having artists figure that out and having a year to really kind of ground in that practice um but yeah mm -hmm. but i mean i would love for john maybe you talk and abby you talk about your experiences and how did you meet like monthly
So I've been thinking of it that way. It's really cool. Um, we also like interacted with other mentors, like I think Jamie is almost like a friend of ours now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool to just like cross pollinate between other pairs. Um, and then I think too, like as a mentor, I got so much out of the program. Um, like I think coming out of like a world pandemic and not having like gallery shows and gallery talks for a couple of years, you get a little rusty. <laughs> and then like being part of this program was so nice to have those opportunities and um just kind of like growing my confidence again to be a leader and help other artists has been really great too. So and we've definitely encouraged, um, I think I put it out at the front end and maybe also at the quarterly check-in. So it's like, hey, if you want to talk to another mentor, I'll help facilitate that meeting. But you don't have to just meet with your mentor. You can meet with any of the mentors in the program. So there's that also opportunity. I mean, just picking the brains of all of, and the mentees would pick each other's brains and, you know, share, skill share. And I mean, it's pretty exciting, the like, the just exchange that was happening. Um, I don't know if Reese, you want to talk about your or MK, your experience sure. with your me monthly meetings? Yeah, I mean, I feel like my meetings with Matthew, one like always ran long. <laughs> but most often it was just like I would go to his shop space um, and really just these conversations. You know, I'm just sitting down and kind of talking for two, three, three, four hours, like really back and forth, just kind of exchanging ideas first about, like initially when we started meeting, kind of just about like the work for the program, um, but conversations got really personal and I got to like know Matt as both an artist and just like a guy. Um, and I, I was really lucky in having someone who I felt had like a really extensive network that I could tap into for like, like I said, like getting those opportunities that neither of us had the skill set for or the facility for, but you knew people who did have that experience or that knowledge. Um, so like, you know, I, I felt really lucky to have a mentor who was as, as skilled and knowledgeable as Matt, but also someone who was as ingrained in the creative community was something that felt invaluable about our pairing. Um, cause like through Matthew, I felt like I got a lot as well. Um, but I would always say, I, I felt like I was always in the driver's seat of my ideas. I never felt like I was being like straight away from what I was interested in pursuing. Um, and I felt like I came to the mentorship with kind of like this strong intention at least. Um, and then to meet with Matthew, who was already like an established furniture major, was really just like setting these like goal posts essentially of I knew what I wanted to do, but then like figuring out how to actually like produce packaging selection was really valuable from someone like them. Um, yeah. Katie or MK, anything? And any other questions that I actually have for, for you? Sure. So you know, once school's over, critiques are hard to find. Mm -hmm. You become you're in this isolated world. Yeah. Um, I, I went to school of an architect, so I understand the critique part. And when I started making human artwork, you know, your family loves everything you do, and it's really and <laughs> when you dismiss their judgment. Um, that idea of having a community that you get an honest, um, you know, even if it's a harsh critique, you get that that honesty is have you found that that happened with the other mentees and mentors where you can say, here's what I'm doing, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, even like a part of the program was a few like in progress critique sessions. Um, so people brought the work that they had really into this room, either like had it in front of us for projections. And I feel like, you know, when you're able to show work to other artists, you know, everyone kind of understands that no one's trying to be rude or no yeah. one is attacking your work personally and kind of gets over like, the, oh, wow, it looks great. I love it. <laughs> like understands that critique is like something constructive, but will always be like helpful as well as this critical. Um, so I think like the program offered opportunity for that. Um, 
I think thankfully I'm I'm lucky enough to have both within like sort of my social circle and who I got exposed to within Matthew's social circle, people who were willing to offer that kind of constructive criticism you know, that was super valuable throughout really the development of like the work I made here and kind of just like the direction of my practice in general. No, that would be, I mean, that would be wonderful. It's, I, I'm always struggling with trying to understand what this stuff means like with people around me, you know, for the rest of the world. My, my view is one thing, but I, I'd really like to hear the rest of the world give it a, you know, good yeah, sound. Yeah. yeah, I think that's something that is really valuable about just like having a program that is exclusively targeted. But like everyone's kind of after that, and everyone understands that or is willing to give that to the people who are in the back of the show. Yeah, of course. Like, if I'm going to be writing, like, what I'm doing the most, I think, because it's like, so I really, I never it's not even like, but it's not just like throwing out, you know, I think for the few writers out there, a lot of like, like working through, you know, just you know, just constantly thinking about that. And that, I think, is really good. Thank you. I'm sorry, that's super exciting to see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Elena, I think you were talking about building in more critique sections. Yes, um, I'm wanting to have uh, critiques happen quarterly. So like every few months, because I think that gives enough of a buffer time for people to sit with whatever feedback they got, have some fun with it, but then also bring something else back, um, which will give in, I think, at a quarterly rate, like at least three critiques before the next or maybe like two before like exhibition at least two so um that's definitely something that's going to be implemented more because i also enjoyed it even as a mentor and i was at your session for the critiques anyway so yeah yeah any other questions just practically, like how our studio visits are people using silos. So that one is up for debate. I I'm keeping kind of the model that Lois used of asking the cohort of like, what's a good day? Because if I make a good day right now, that day could probably change. So that one is uh what's the word I'm looking for? To be determined. Yeah. Yeah, I think I sent out a lot of surveys. Yeah. Like I sent out a survey of like what what days are best for availability for programming, and then it was just whatever the most people could do. And unfortunately, not everyone could. And I tried to, you know, work around, but it just got yeah. You know, when I understood that, well, yeah, people have to work. Yeah, <laughs> but um, and then um, I was gonna answer one other aspect, but it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, as a for a client or children, um, what do you think is best to not send it like the singular name, but to get a pixel brother to your name, like that, for example, uh, if you were interested in the project or you see the value of work or a single Um, so. As a fellow photographer, I I would love to see like a mix, like an overview, because um like single bodies of work are exciting, but I also find it exciting to see like a bit of a trajectory. So are are you playing like a mentee side or mentor? Mm -hmm. Mentee. Mm -hmm. So maybe if depending on how many like works that you have, even if it's like a couple from a few or something that's like an overview which are things that you can then explain a little bit. Cause there are a couple of questions that like ask about your work and kind of your journey in general. But yeah, I would say as like a reviewer, I would love to see like a mix. Yeah.
And don't be afraid to apply with sketches. I know Elena yeah. mentioned that, but I felt like when we were reviewing last year, that was exciting to me to see people like the way they're thinking about and putting together their ideas as opposed to just final work. So when I applied, I put literally like every different type of art I had. I put some of my comic book work in there. I put some of my printmaking work in there. Um, I just put like a bunch of different stuff and like, well, I hope this ends up okay. And I ended up getting it. So I think that I'm um, more showing like, hey, here are a bunch of different things I work on instead of this thing like here, this is the only thing I do. It's probably a good idea for it. Mm -hmm. this, at least in this case, it's sort of program, which is very counterintuitive because usually when you like apply for galleries and stuff like that, they want like a specific like just just one uh thought road. So you know, kind of with, with this program at least I would, I would say, you know, just kind of throw throw all everything at the wall. So the way I approach it was each mentee, we're, we're here to support, the mentors were here to support each mentee personal goals of like where they're at within their practice and then kind of solidifying and then expanding and experimenting and um, and then eventually, yes, making some new work for the exhibition. Mm -hmm. But that was like one piece. It wasn't all focused on the exhibition. I mean, it came up fast, I would say. And I think generally it was in the back of most people's minds. But for to me, it's larger than that. It's really thinking about, again, establishing that long-term practice I'll let you answer how you're thinking about it but that yeah now but yeah I I feel like I'm I'm echoing what you said and I feel like it's also kind of personal because I know like when me and Katie met like Katie had goals and then that's what was I guess like the forefront of what we went through in the program and then also I think just um if it hasn't been mentioned the exhibition is practice in progress because I think maybe not for all artists these are like in progress works and not necessarily a final resting place because I mean realistically we have like a couple more le months left of the program um so that that could be a goal of like I need to have a finished piece for the exhibition or at least something to put in there but also I think the long term is more of whatever long term means for that pairing um I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? You have an idea of range of this goals for work, like for example, is it to gain, for example, a network in here, or maybe even uh, get some recognition, or even maybe a personal is about money or you know, like, um, making their art. And to move from hobby to uh, profession. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to way to earn money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 what kind of things people need to work? I just I can answer a little bit. Sure. I think one common thread I saw was the desire for community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that was a common thread. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I just want to say that. Can I tell you my personal case? Yeah. For an example of how all over the place were, like one of mine was to figure out, or no, one of mine was to separate making art from making money for a while. So mm -hmm. the opposite of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to make money off of my art anymore. Um, I wanted to do it just for personal expression and joy. Um, because we're not going to be making money off of my art, and it's taking a drag for me. Another goal that I had was um, to publish something mm -hmm. this year, something that I did, which I did. Um, so they were kind of all in that. I'm trying to think. There were like five big goals. Um, but stuff like that. So I think they were so personal. Like I mean, they're saying they were so personal. Mm -hmm. But I would also say that maybe an unsaid goal that felt like 
the program provided for all of us or an unsaid something that it gave us was like professionalizing our practice in a way of like a lot of the workshops were around like things like writing your artist statement, um, understanding social media, like building your brand. So it's about how like they were teaching us even like talk backs today, like how do you talk about yourself as an artist? So all of that stuff, like all the workshopping stuff really, yeah, I would say, even though it wasn't on my list, my personal list was really helpful too. And something everybody got out of it was just professional. Yeah, the idea of professionalizing your practice and being able to like, ooh, walk out into the world and being like, I'm an artist. This is what my work is about. And this is where you can find, you know, this is where you can find me and not being shy, shy about that and understanding who you are mm -hmm. and how to talk again, how to talk about yourself as an artist. Mm -hmm. And we had artists like you were really sh transitioning in your practice. So we had artists that like are moving into totally different areas. So that, that was a goal was to like experiment and try this new, whole new space. Mm -hmm. And then we had artists that were like, I want to know how to get my work into a gallery and I want to understand that gallery scene. And that was like fundamentally what their, you know, thing was. And then another artist was like, um, I'm interested in, you know, some sort of printmaking technique and how do I, you know, do this very specific thing. So it really ranges and is has to, in my mind, has to be customized to each mentee to like help each mentee realize their goals and like just grow at where they need to grow. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. For the, no, it was great too. Yeah, I think I'm also gonna um, add to that in, there's a, a question about that in the application. So I, I would really encourage being specific about like, what do I need right now? Um, Cause that's like really helpful to know and just be like as specific as possible or whatever is needed. Um, and then like, if accepted into the program, like it's okay for those things to change because stuff happens. And I think that's the fun part of it. Um, and I know like we've been on like the side of like mentee um, like goals, like what we're getting out of it. But if anyone in here is applying as a mentor and wants to add like what your goals were, I can say like what mine were of just whoever my mentee was going to be, which happened to be Katie. I'm like, I want to make sure that I help Katie meet her goals as best as I can and be like a guiding source. And then also wanting to build community where like my top two things so you can have goals as mentors as well yeah i work with a few different mediums so for the application should i submit something that's more focused on one medium or just a little bit of like everything a little bit of everything because you also have the option to select more than one medium if you happen to be someone who's more like multidisciplinary. So yeah, more the better if you happen to have, be in that scenario where you're um, working in multiple disciplines. Even if they're like past very stream differences? I would say yes. Um, I'm saying yes only because like through my time being in the program, I've heard so many different stories of people working in different mediums or have went from being a painter to like the very opposite side of being something else or, and then you've also like saw that through applications of people, like they just have like a, a wide net of things that they've experienced that somehow happens to really be beneficial to whoever is gonna be paired with them or something. So, yeah. And we have a couple of interdisciplinary mentors as well. Um, so that work very much so around whatever medium seems to um, communicate their, the idea that they're working on best. And so they're con they're constantly stretching themselves. Like Normal Raja um, is an artist here, one of our mentors, and she will it, all of a sudden be like, all right, ceramics is the, the thing that is gonna best communicate this idea. I gotta learn how to do ceramics. So then she'll go out and so <laughs> and like work with um, other ceramicists and, you know, just spend all of that time um so that's a kind of an exciting thing so we we're also yeah and no like we like we had two movement artists dance artists that um this past year but we didn't have we none of our mentees were really focused in that realm 
Um, but again, I think they expanded, you know, the way that we all, or specifically those mentees, but then all of us in the program thought about, um, about movement in, in our bodies and our relationship of our bodies to our, our, our practices. Uh, so. Thanks, you guys. Um, if you have questions, my email address is just Elena at marinarts.org. Um, you can also ask the lowest questions if you have questions about just the current cycle and other things. Um, and then also we have these cute little pins and mini sketchbooks if you didn't grab one um, at the front. Oh. Yeah. So, thank yeah, thank you, you all. Thank you. Yeah, it's going on with my computer. My laptop started dying. Yeah, and mine's plugged in and it's all almost dead. Like I feel like I can't see that.